Welcome to episode 5 of my old school RuneScape progression series. If you guys are enjoying this series, please feel free to check out my channel and see what else I post. I'm mainly posting this series. But if you enjoy this series, you could always subscribe. That'd be really cool and keep up to date on this series. And if you're enjoying the progress of this account or, or anything like that, you could always subscribe to the channel. That would be really cool. You could also like the video. That would be awesome as well. I'm just doing all the cliche stuff that everybody does at the beginning of a video. But apparently it works to get your video out into the algorithm, uh, which is always going to be good. But anyway, enough rambling. Yeah, if you enjoy RuneScape content, and what I hope I post is pretty chill RuneScape content, check out my channel, possibly subscribe, and like the video, that'd be cool. So, to start this episode off, I want to say that, yeah, I have switched to the fixed resolution. I honestly normally play with fixed resolution. The reason that I wasn't before was just simply because I think it looks nicer on YouTube to be playing on the resizable mode. But for me, I, I do enjoy playing, playing it playing like this more, playing on the fixed resolution more. Why does sometimes, it's so hard for me to say the most basic things. Anyway, yeah, I normally play on fixed resolution, so at least for now, I'm going to be playing, or at least in this episode for sure, I'm going to be playing on fixed resolution. Uh, and we'll see how kind of things go. Obviously, things are always, you know, subject to change depending on the situation and stuff like that. But for now, I'm going to be playing on this mode, uh, the fixed resolution mode, at least for this episode. Anyway, there are also both the skill capes that I got over the previous two episodes. And on that note of the previous two episodes, for this episode, the goal is just going to be questing. That's like all I'm going to be doing. I just want to do as many easy quests as I can get those out of the way and kind of work my way into the more difficult quests. I'm not totally sure what those are going to be right now, but yeah, the goal is just questing for at least a little while because I want to get some of the basic stuff just out of the way. I'm also really quickly just going to sell off all the stuff from the last episode. So this is what's left over from the Winter Toad. I, I sold a lot of it already, but I'm just going to kind of right now sell off everything else that I still have left over. That's been almost 60 hours and that hasn't sold. That's crazy. Anyway, yeah, so that's what I'm doing right now, and that's what this episode is going to be about. So I just sold all that stuff for 1.9 mil, so almost 2 mil, uh, which is actually crazy. This this also, too, the difference between what the Grand Exchange says something goes for and what uh, RuneLite says they're actually trading for is pretty crazy there. So I'm just kind of selling the final few things here. But yeah, I made almost 2 mil from those final crates from winter toad in the last episode so yeah that's cool another two mil i also forgot i actually have two of these tomb of fire books so i'm obviously i'm gonna sell one because i think it's it's being valued at 900k according to rune light there which wow that another basically mil or 750k see the difference there it says the actively it's trading for 900k but then the grand exchange says that it's only worth 750k so it's kind of a weird back and forth of like what's actually right. I feel like I, I don't really know which one to trust, to be honest, so I just kind of sell it and see what I get. But yeah, I'll take 750k for it, to be honest. Like, I, I'm more than happy if I can get that much for it. Actually, you know what? I'll do 740k and see. Yeah, instantly sold it for another 800. Actually, I sold it for 888k. So yeah, I guess RuneLite in this situation was closer to being accurate. But there's 7.2 mil, so I have more than enough for another bond, which again, as I'll continue to say, is, is usually the continuous goal. And I just found a magic seed in my bank, which I obviously would have gotten from Winter Toad that I just didn't sell. And apparently this magic seed is worth 130k. So there's a happy surprise. Again, I, I'd I must have gotten it from one of the, the loot crates at the uh, Winter Toad that I just didn't even realize it, that just it was in my bank account. <laughs> so the new total in my bank is 7.4 mil. I just neatened my bank a little bit. It was getting a little messy. It's not great right now by any means. I just spent like a couple minutes just kind of organizing everything at, at least somewhat efficiently. I know it's going to become a mess pretty quickly once I start questing here and, and kind of messing with it. But yeah, it looks a little bit better now. Normally, I do like to have my bank like super neat. This is acceptable for now. Uh, in the future, I'll definitely neaten it a little bit more. Now back on track to the goal for this episode, which is just questing. I'm just going to do as many as I can. I'm not necessarily sure of the order. I just want to do some of those early on quests that like unlock basic areas. Like I know that there's a bunch in Ardoin. That's how I pronounce it. I know everybody pronounces it differently, but there's just a bunch all around there that I want to do as well as over here. I want to do Priest and Peril so I can obviously unlock uh, more Titania. Those are like the rough ideas that I have and I'll do a bunch in between and stuff and get like XP on different stats and all that stuff. And as I always do, I'm just on the OSRS wiki just like looking through the quests in kind of order and what's easy and what's not. And I'm just gonna like look through here and do do what makes sense. I'm somewhat ready to, I'm gonna go do a monk's friend or monk's friend first. There is monk's friend done. The, the nice little party that happens at the end of it, which... <laughs> Kind of cheesy, but hey, that's cool. There it is, Monk's Friend. Done one quest point, 2,000 wooding. Wood, wooding? Wood cutting, and the eight lorins is actually good. 
pop those balloons. While I'm in the area, I'm also doing a clock tower, which is just about to be done here. Clock tower done, pretty easy quest. So that one's another simple one out of the way. And now I'm just about to finish this. I think this one's called Hazel Cult or something like that. Hazel Cult, I, I don't know. Yeah, Hazel Cult, just while I'm in Ordoin. Uh, forgive me on the pronunciation of that word. I'm just gonna do um, some of the quests in this area as well because I wanna be able to use that teleport to get out here. And the next one that I'm just about to finish is Plague City, just sticking in Ordoin. Feels, I feel weird. I feel like I'm saying this, the name of the city wrong, but I'm sticking with it for now. But anyway, that one's done as well. So now I'm just gonna kind of, I don't know what I'm gonna do next, actually. I'm gonna take 18 mining, that's cool. And about to finish one of the last ones in this area. There's probably a few more, actually, but this will be Biohazard done. Once I finish talking to the king here. Biohazard done. Oh, I got thieving. I, I, I didn't even pay attention to the XP that I'm gonna get. I'm just doing these quests to get them out of the way. I'm in the middle of sheep herder. I just got all four of those sheep in there and that was so difficult that it is crazy. I distinctly remember doing this quest a few years ago and thinking the same thing. One of the most annoying quests in the game, like no doubt about it. That took almost 20 minutes to get four sheep in there. Man, that was stressful. <laughs> okay, sheep herder done. I'm, do I'm done for the day, man. <laughs> I'm going to bed. Four quest points? Yeah, it's probably worth more than that. I don't know what it is about that quest, man. That one just gets me. It's so, just so stressful. I don't know. <laughs> Getting those sheep in there was so hard, but yeah. I'm done for the day. I'm going to bed now. Fishing contest done. So after sheep herder, I'm, I'm doing an easy one. That should give me quite a bit of fishing XP as well. Yeah, 31 fishing. I think it took me from 24 to 31 fishing. I've literally never fished once. I've just done two quests and I've got 31 fishing from doing Sea Slug and now fishing contest. This is also an awesome Runelite plugin. Uh, I'm not sure what it's called. Once I get the name of it, I'll, I'll put a, like I'll put the name of it on the screen, which you can use as well. You just right click, set path, and then it gives you like, that's also the cat in the bathroom. I'm gonna have to go get him out of there. And it gives you like the quickest mathematical path to the area. So it's, it's really helpful actually when like questing and like trying to get around and just doing quests as fast as possible. I'm in the middle of Dwarf Cannon and I just wanted to record because I always think that this guy here is so cute. The little, the little kid, sorry, the, the cat man. He's, he's just loving life, going crazy back there, just doing laps around the apartment. In this episode, I'm doing two methods of questing. I'm using the quest helper, which is what you're seeing here. It's actually great. It basically speed, spoop. Wow, it spoon feeds the quest to you, but I'm also using Slayer music if like this doesn't work as well, or like sometimes the quest guide isn't as great or doesn't work super great. So I'm also using Slayer music, who's also a YouTuber as well. I'll put a link for his channel in the description because he's got by far the best quest guides that there are. So I'll put a link for him in the description. But yeah, I'm utilizing kind of both of the quest helper and him. Also, sometimes I just know how to do the quest. So I'm just doing multiple methods on getting quests done as quickly as I can. But I thought I'd mention that. This quest helper is awesome and Slayer Music stuff is awesome as well, so I'll put a link to his channel in the description in case you for some reason haven't heard of him because I feel like most people know of him and use him for doing quests that they don't know how to do. Just about to finish Murder Mystery here. Um, I didn't use Slayer Music for this quest. I did use the Runelite plugin quest helper, but because of using Slayer Music for it maybe like a year ago, I know that you dropped the, the silver necklace. Yeah, and then there's no other way to get that again, so it's one of those like weird items that you just can keep from this quest. I don't know, found that interesting. But anyway, murder mystery is done. <laughs> just gonna go over here, talk to Gertrude. I think that's her name, right? And finish uh, Gertrude's cat. And Gertrude's cat is done. I got some cooking XP, but my cooking is already 99, so... Anyway, there it is, that one done. And now I have my own little kitten. Moving on to Falador here to do some of the quests here. I just did the first one, I think, kind of the opener to these quests, which is Black Knight's Fortress, uh, which is done. So yeah. And now for recruitment drive, I have to become a female. Normally it makes me bald when I become a female. I wonder if it's going to here. Uh, no, okay, it actually left me with the same hair before. I'll probably stay a female for a while. Just about done recruitment drive. Took a little longer than I thought because I kept messing up a little bit and then you have to restart, but anyway, there's recruitment drive done and actually a ton of XP in a bunch of places that I didn't expect. Oh, 13 herblor, herblor, whatever it is, and agility. Wow, yeah, that's actually awesome. I didn't expect all that XP. I'm in the middle of doing a quest that I have never done before called a port... You can see it right there, I'm not gonna try to pronounce it, but I didn't know that I had like to fight somebody in this quest, I probably should have paid more attention, and I am, there's no way I'm gonna be able to do it without dying, so I'm gonna have to bail out here, because 
yeah, I'm, I'm about to die. So I'm, I'm going to dip on this one and come back and finish them later. Oh my God, I have two HP. <laughs> I'm back at it and I'm prepared. I also, now thinking about it, pretty sure that the prayer that I should protect from ranged um, is the one that I should protect from, not from magic. Again, if you hear noise in the background, that's the cat. He's just, I don't know, man. He's just chilling. He's hanging off the edge of a chair right now, apparently. It's fun for him. I think he's trying to settle down to go to sleep. Magic doesn't protect. Let me switch to ranged. I feel like that's going to be what it is. I don't know. He's hitting more zeros with it, so okay, that's probably what it is. Feeling like I'm really playing Runescape now, actually having to uh, kill some of the the bo the yeah the bosses. Right, even that's not really a boss. That's probably like the easiest boss that there is in the game. Not that it's a boss, just a somebody to kill while doing a quest. I don't know. I'm gonna stop talking now. <laughs> These also are really cool glasses, by the way, that they gave me. I don't know. This quest is done. I'm not gonna try to pronounce the name of it, but I got a bunch of Slayer XP and I got the glasses, which didn't even know existed in the game. They they feel super 80s, which is awesome. Um, and I also think, now looking, I don't know if this is new or I just never paid attention, but this is a Slayer Master here for, like, really low level, like, a really low level Slayer Master, which, there's nine Slayer from that quest, too, which is always cool. Yeah, I, I didn't know that this even existed here. I don't know if I've just been, or I just haven't paid attention to it much, but yeah, there's actually a Slayer Master in Drainer Village. Just about to finish, I forget the name of this quest, I think it's called, like, M not murder mystery, some something with a mystery, Mythin, Mythalin mystery, I think is what that what that what this quest is called. But it's done. Kind of an annoying one actually, but thankfully the quest helper helped me. I also feel like I, I'm not gonna be able to say this enough, but this pathfinder or whatever it's called, like, like I said, once I know the name of it, I'll actually put a link for it on the screen. I uh, just like the the link, not a link, the name of it on the screen. Uh, it just gives you like the mathematical shortest ways of of like getting from point A to point B and I've done this run a lot through the Lumbridge Swamp and I never would have thought that the way that I'm running now is quicker. Usually I'd run like along the outside uh, but yeah, it, it's just a really awesome add-on or plug-in. Alright, I'm gonna do a test here. I've heard that this particular skeleton is one of the only ones in the game that when killed has the old death animation, like from older classic RuneScape, I have no idea if that's true, maybe I, I, it's not, but I'm just gonna kill him and see, because I've never actually killed him, normally I just run. Okay, that didn't feel any different, maybe a little quicker, but it didn't really feel different. There's Restless Ghost, done for some more prayer XP, probably should have done this one earlier on, but anyway, Restless Ghost is done. Okay, so Ernest is now no longer a chicken, and I'm about to be done the quest, Ernest the Chicken. I also love the uh, the Rick and Morty meme that people always joke about in this area. So just looking uh, through the quest dialogue here, or whatever, I'm gonna do Priest in Peril now, just so I can also unlock uh, Mortitania. I didn't record it because I teleported out of there, but you can't kill the, um, I don't know what it is, demon or something that's down in the basement there. You can't kill it with magic, which I didn't know, so now I have to go to the Grand Exchange and actually get a weapon that's not magic, because apparently it's not affected by magic, and I didn't know that. So I'm actually gonna buy a rune scimitar, because I, I do have 41 attack, and I haven't even thought to start buying, like, a proper combat gear, because I'm just kind of not really paying much attention to that. I'm just doing my own thing with, like, quests and skilling and stuff right now. But yeah, I, so I, I just got a, uh, a rune scimitar, so now I should hopefully be able to kill the guy, whatever it is. I'm back at it. This is the, what, the temple demon or whatever? <laughs> the temple guardian that uh, I couldn't kill before that now I can kill with my rune scimitar and gaining a strength level as well. There's priest in peril done. I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, the next quest here is nature spirit, I think. You can literally just start it, like, right away, uh, which I'll do, because I think that gives me some defense XP as well, and it Maybe prayer XP? I, I don't know. I think defense, though, is like the main one that I'll get from starting it. So yeah, here it is. So I can just start uh, Nature Spirit. Okay, that's cool. And I get some pies, apparently. <laughs> There's Nature Spirit done. I got 3,000 crafting, 2,000 hit points, and 2,000 defense. Fair enough. I didn't expect a 3,000 crafting, but 3,000 crafting XP. But I did expect the defense XP, and the hit points is always nice as well. So I'm doing Demon Slayer now, and I'm just killing some rats back here for some bones, because I need like 20 five bones and I actually on the first kill I got a clue scroll which is actually cool uh, clue scrolls are always nice and apparently that is like the easiest kill the I don't know what they're they're not called really bosses like quest bosses the easiest quest boss kill there was I literally just one hit him with the uh the silver light sword I think is what I used yeah silver light and it was like and then also again you can see here quest helper just like spoon feeds the quest to me it just tells me exactly what to say I did write it down but it highlights it in blue what to say so it just makes it even easier there's demon slayer done no xp but three quest points while i'm in varrock i'm also gonna head to the museum here and head downstairs i'm gonna do the museum kudos thing 
Um, I don't. I think that's what it's called. And you get like a thousand XP on both Slayer and Hunter by doing it. And uh, with the Rune Light plugin, again, Spoon feeds it to you, so you can do it super easily. And I'll get a thousand XP on both Slayer and Hunter. I guess in a way, it's it's kind of like a quest, but not really. It's like really easy and really quick. Finishing up here, answering the last few questions. And as you can see there, that's Rune Light actually. That highlights it in green. The proper answer makes it super easy. <laughs> thousand XP in both Slayer and Hunter like that, which I don't know what it's gonna give me, 13 Slayer and nine Hunter. Cool, that took like literally like three minutes, not even so nice. And completing another Falador quest, the Knight's Sword is done for 12,725 smithing, which puts it at 29 and just about to finish a super easy free to play quest, which actually when I was a kid was not easy. This was a difficult one as a kid because there's actually like some weird stuff you have to do, but it's easy now as an adult. <laughs> but anyway, Prince Alley Rescue is done. So now I'm doing Lost City. That's what this one's called, right? I think it's called Lost City. And I'm just uh, killing the boss for Lost City. I guess now this would be considered the toughest boss in this episode so far, but it's obviously easy because you can just hide behind these three mushrooms and literally take no damage. Now that the nature, I don't know what that is, that spirit is dead. Uh, I'm gonna go and chop on this tree. I'm gonna get like as many as I possibly can because I don't want to have to come back here. So I'm literally just gonna like fill my empty inventory with with these uh what are they Draymond branches? I'm just gonna get as as many as I possibly can because yeah, it's also gonna help with the Fremenic trials trails Fremenic trails. Yeah, I I, I don't need to over explain anymore. <laughs> Step inside and there Lost City complete for three quest points. Really easy quest actually. And now I can hold a dragon longsword. What I'm gonna do now just randomly out of nowhere <laughs> is uh Elemental Workshop one and then probably two because they're pretty easy, but I do need 20 mining, so I'm just gonna quickly get 20 mining. All right, and like five minutes later, 20 mining, super easy, so now I'm gonna go do the Elemental Workshop quests. There's Elemental Workshop 1 done for 5,000 crafting, 5,000 smithing, and now I'm about to start the second one, just kind of looking here where I have to start. I'm probably gonna use the, the quest guide, because this one is like easy, but also like a lot of weird stuff you have to do as well. And Elemental Workshop 2 is done for just more XP. I'm never gonna complain about. Also putting me at a total of 82 two quest points already, so that's cool. 36 smithing, and I've never smithed anything, I guess, aside from 64 crafting, too. I mean, I guess I've smith with, smithed within this quest, but still, 32 smithing is pretty easy, and this cool mask or helmet or whatever, I don't know. Anyway, I like the, the cooking hood better. So I'm in the middle of Fremenic trial, Trails. I don't know why I always call it Trials. The middle of the Fremenic Trails, and this guy is taking forever to die. I, I didn't... I. I I know that he's pretty easy to beat if you're using the overhead, the prayer overheads, but it took a very long time to kill him. And to be honest, this is my second time doing it because the first time I was so confident that I could do it without any prayer potions that I came in here with none and barely made it to the second time. So now this time he, I can die. Yeah, it says now I let him beat me and it's a safe death. I'm literally going to turn off the auto retaliate and just like walk here and just let him kill me. And I guess it's not really a death. You get down to one hit point and then just like bow down to him. All right, Fremenic Trails done. Actually a pretty long quest, uh, but not really that hard, just kind of time consuming. But I get a bunch of XP to a bunch of places, which is kind of the main reason that I did it. Uh, I'm gonna wait here and see what I get. I get 34 strength, 22 defense, 42 attack, 30 hit points, 33 fishing, 24 thieving, 23 agility, 49 fletching, uh, is that all? That's all. Yeah, that's crazy. That's why I did it, because I know you get, like, just a crap ton of XP on, like, a bunch of stats. So now I want to get Holy Grail done, but to do that, I have to do Merlin's Crystal. Uh, so I'm going to do Merlin's Crystal and then Holy Grail. There's Merlin's Crystal done for six quest points. Wow, I guess you don't really get XP anywhere, but six quest points is pretty good. And you literally start the Holy Grail right where that one leaves off. So I'm just going to talk to King Arthur again. And start Holy Grail. Every time I see this boss, or whatever this is, this monster, or whatever, I don't know this, <laughs> I don't know what they are in quests, but I just love, the, this must be one of the older animations. Did they switch it? Anyway, this, this must be one of the um, the older, like, character graphics in the game. It seems like they switched it. Normally, you, you click to attack, but now I just talk to him, and then he attacks me. Okay, that's kind of weird. Okay, see, I think that was the issue. So I think if I just go into the settings here, they've recently changed that up, but I think if I go here and have it all left click, and then, yeah, then it's attack. Okay, then I can do the method that I actually wanted to do, which is go like that, and then like that, and it's kind of the way of safe spotting this guy without using uh, prayer, although I, I might just stick with prayer, but 
for now anyway, I'm gonna do it like this. Never done this before, but I totally just messed up. I killed him with the rune scimitar, or well, I didn't actually because you have to finish the final hit with the whatever sword that is, the Cal Excalibur sword, and I didn't, so now I have to redo it and I'm out of prayer, so I'm gonna have to do the this method the whole way through, which honestly will take probably a few minutes. There's the Holy Grail done. I did that mainly for the defense XP, but also getting that um, prayer XP is nice, and there's 45 prayer. 34 defense, and I'm at a combat level of 48 now. Still a magic-based account, though. I still have 8 attack, 3 defense, 55 ranged, and 1 magic would level me up. So I'm still a magic-based uh, account, I guess. I'm just about to have finished, uh, I think it's called the Tourist Trap. Yeah, it says right there, the Tourist Trap. I did this one mainly for the agility XP, because after this, I'm going to go and do, I think it's called the Grand Tree, or something. I think it's called the Grand Tree. There's the word tree in it. So I did this quest because I only have 23 agility, and I think you need 25. I know it is boostable, but I was like, you know what, I'll just do this quest and get as much agility XP as I can. And I'm just going to put all the XP on agility, because it's by far the the worst one to train, so there's 28, so I already have enough, and I'm just gonna put it again on agility. Please give me 30, okay, nice, 30. So I can already do Varrock now, which is cool, and there's the quest complete. Okay, yeah, so it is called the Grand Tree, so that's the quest that I'm gonna do now, because then, you know, slowly working up to the bigger quests, ready to go. I got the uh, fire-making hood on instead of the cooking one. I also brought the Tomb of Fire with me to boost the magic, uh, yeah, boost my, my magic stats, I guess, and actually kill. I think this will be the biggest boss so far, the biggest boss that I've fought so far, although it's very easy. Quest Helper and this kind of Pathfinder work so well together and just getting quests done as quickly as you can. I do also just enjoy doing quests. Like, it's something I actually enjoy. I enjoy questing, but it's just really nice having this guidance, I guess, because then I can also, like, watch TV in the background and not have to be, like, fully paying attention. This Quest Helper, man, it just spoon feeds it to you. It just tells you exactly what to do and how to do it. Like, it, it's hard to mess up with this um with this quest, quest helper add-on. So now once I get down here, this is where the, the boss will be. I'm going to keep calling it a boss, even though I know it's not necessarily a boss, though it could be. Honestly, I don't know what else to call it aside from a boss. I feel like it's just a boss fight. That, that just makes sense to me. That's just like what my mind tells me to call it. So is it even showing me the safe spot? I'm pretty sure that's the safe spot that this quest helper is showing me. <laughs> I'm not going to go to it, though. I'm just going to use the overhead prayer. I brought some prayer potions as well. be pretty easy to kill it just with some magic here. Um, and just obviously he can do literally zero damage to me with this prayer. Didn't take too long. I didn't really do much except just wait for my character to kill him. He's dead. And now I have to go down here. And I, I remember this too. This is kind of like a little confusing on how to get there, right? Like a little bit, but not with that because it makes it so easy to just tell you exactly where to go. I feel like even in the Monkey Madness quest when you're in the, the caves, the monkey caves or the gorilla caves or whatever, uh, yeah, in those caves, it's going to be easy because you can literally just guide yourself through there. Like I, I have gotten lost there a little bit, I think, but it's going to be pretty hard too with, with all these these assistants now that, uh, the assistant plugins that Rune Knight has, which I think is awesome. I know some people might not like them, but I think it's cool. I think it's nice to just have this guidance. The Grand Tree is done, mainly attack XP. That's pretty cool. Five quest points again. Surprisingly, a lot of quest points for these quests. 35 agility. I was hoping for 40, but that's fine. 35 agility, 45 attack. Uh, is that all? Yeah, that's all. That's fine. That's cool. 48 combat still, but slowly getting to a non-maged base account. So I'm at 100 quest points. I think that's a good time to end the episode. Uh, I got these pretty quickly. I, and I had a lot of fun. I love questing, and, and especially with these, especially with the quest helper, it's making it kind of even more fun. And also Slayer Music, like I said, I'll put a link for his channel in the description because I definitely used him for some of these quests as I always do. And I'm not ashamed to admit that. I feel like so many people don't want to say that they use guides for these quests, but some of them are hard. So anyway, yeah. That's gonna do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please feel free to like and subscribe and you can also come check out my channel. I post mainly RuneScape content and the main thing I'm posting right now is this series, but it's all pretty chill stuff. So if you enjoy kind of chill RuneScape content, then subscribing would be cool. That makes sense, right? It'd be cool if you subscribed. But anyway, that's gonna do it for this episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed.